podcaster Ollie Mann from the podcast Answer Me This. Hello. Answer me what's in the papers then. What's in the papers? Well, the, the biggest story of the day, without question, is the Telegraph's uh, truth about the Cabinet's expenses story. You've been leading with it here, it's everywhere. Um, must be weird waking up this morning being Gordon Brown's cleaner, I think. <laughs> I just can't imagine uh, what must be going through uh, their heads, um, having their payment details discussed on the front of the paper. Um, it is the story that the Telegraph's put on the front, Gordon Brown's case, but of course this goes much deeper and wider. They've already, I just heard them talking to you about how in future days they're going to be talking about opposition uh, parliamentarians. They've got the full list, basically. They've got the full list and all the details, and they've got the addresses, which is crucial. Um, it, when the uh, parliamentary expenses are going to be released officially, apparently, it's not going to include the addresses, but having that information, having the addresses where certain uh, white goods and so on were delivered, um, can really expose what the Telegraph calls a kind of fraud. Uh, now, of course, MPs are denying that that's the case and nothing illegal happened, but that is what the Telegraph labels it, uh, because they can trace exactly where things were delivered and whether, in fact, that was the MP's second home, quote unquote, or not. Um, I mean, the Gordon Brown story itself, that he paid his cleaner through his brother, um, and there's another story as well that uh, he didn't claim. Uh, excuse me, that he did claim twice for some plumbing work, uh, apparently inadvertently, um, seems to me fairly underwhelming. I mean, it's hardly kind of corruption of Mugabe proportions, is it? But it's not brown paper bags full of used 20s, is it? Exactly. Um, I mean, we see worse things in other countries in Europe, but it does but show... But isn't the point about this the public's perception of politicians? Yeah. And I think the feeling from anyone reading The Telegraph today, and I'm sure a lot more people will be going out and buying The Telegraph today than would normally do so, uh, the feeling will be that there is this kind of endemic culture of expenses, exploitation loopholes uh, in government. Um, and that is damaging. Um, how long it's going to last, I don't know. I don't know how interested the public are, but today it's kind of fun, spurious gossip. Nine through. pages in the Telegraph. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's have another story. What else mm -hmm. you got? Well, front of the Daily Mail, I mean, it's a bad day for the... <laughs> every day seems to be a bad day for the government recently, but uh, front page of the Daily Mail is the other story, the story that probably would have been the front of the Telegraph had they not decided to run uh, their expenses story, that incredible picture of Joanna Lumley uh, with Phil Woolis, the immigration minister, yesterday, holding that sort of bizarre, impromptu press conference because she chased him into Four Millbank when he was doing rounds of TV interviews and then sort of caught him on the back foot. Um, the male's take on Joanna it is... Joanna Lumley ambushes hapless minister, there it, you go. Exactly. Uh, absolutely farcical is their take on it. She dictated government policy to him is their take on it. But actually, again, um, it's difficult to really see another take on that story. Anyone watching that footage... I mean, it was weird, wasn't it? It was like watching a kind of middle manager from the Halifax kind of getting a drubbing down from a kind of more attractive, uh, more sympathetic Mrs Thatcher, really. I mean, he was just completely dwarfed by her. Uh, and the public's opinion is so strongly on her side. Um, I saw them debating last night on Question Time as to whether she should stand as an MP herself. Um, I can't see how Phil Willis can actually recover from it's this. the Martin Bell factor it would be, wouldn't it? Well, exactly. That's what they were comparing her to. And, and it, for him, that's a big deal. You know, he's wheeled out to the Mail and the Sun to be hard on immigration. That's his job, that's his purpose, that's what he does. Uh, and if those papers are seeing him as a farce, um, I can't really see what future he's got. What have you found job. in The Guardian that you like today? This is fantastic. Uh, this is uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, apparently, is the next Helen Fielding. Uh, he wrote this book, uh, Clisson et Eugenie. Uh, it was sort of like a Gavin and Stacey in the 18th century, I suppose. Um, it's kind of a chick lit, the Guardian is calling it. Um, apparently, amongst all the killing and the ruling and the shouting, he found time to write some, uh, some love uh, novellas. Right. Uh, and this one's been unearthed. Fascinating story, actually, about how a historian's pieced it all together, because different pages were scattered all around the empire as souvenirs of his reign. So putting them all together and translating them into English has been a big deal, but the There's book's a film published. there, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. It's sort of Da Vinci Code, but French. Um, <laughs> Uh, they've got extracts from the book. Code, then. All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, they've got extracts from the book. I threw myself on your body. It was icy cold. I wanted to bring you back to life with my breath, to bring you warmth and life, but you could no longer hear me. You no longer knew me. It's oh. like Mills Air Boon, isn't it? It's sad, isn't it? Well, um, he had a dark side. Who knew? <laughs> um, the Sun, Bruno Starr, three-day body bleach hell. Yes, this is a good bit of schadenfreude, actually, for MPs who have been taken in by Sasha Baron Cohen over the years, so uh, at least there's something in the papers that might cheer them up today. Uh, apparently, whilst filming for Bruno, uh, he's, he's very method, Sasha Baron Cohen. He's a method comedian. Right. Uh, he'd heard of the sort of homosexual penchant for hairlessness, uh, so he decided to have all of his hair bleached 
Um, people might remember the publicity shots for Borat. He's actually a very hairy man. Uh, he wanted all of his hair bleached so that he could play Bruno in this new film that's coming out in July, his kind of gay fashion character. Uh, and it went terribly wrong. And according uh, to The Sun, he needed emergency treatment. He wasn't able to sit down for three days. Um, uh, that's the story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got to say, you've chosen the most extraordinary collection of stories with a paper review I've seen for a long time. Well, you know, I, Russia burning Cohen, I thought was a good uh, headline. It but I was trying attention. to work out what the headline, Russia, Sasha, Rash. Baron, Russia, yes. but yeah, right. Russia burning. I think we could have done better than that, you know, if we'd have spent an hour between us coming up with a headline. Coffee, I think they were rushed. Coffee time, Ollie. Off you go. Thank <laughs> you for now.